Hi, my name's Mike Groh, former quarterback in class of 1995 and current quarterback coach and recruiting coordinator. And on behalf of Coach Al Groh and his staff, I want to give you an inside look into Virginia football and how special our players really are. At the University of Virginia in our football program, we stand for three things. To win and compete for championships every year. To educate and graduate our football players and to prepare them and their skills someday to play in the NFL. Take a look. I think it, that uh, just the transition from where the program was my first year to where it is was this past year is um, just tremendous, the change. Um, we've established ourselves as one of the best programs in the country. One thing that I have valued about the football program is that the program has represented integrity in, in various ways. It, it has represented integrity in the behavior of coaches, in the conduct of students. It's been a remarkably self-disciplined, hard-working uh, program that has done good things for the students who participate. Teams are gunning for us and we're no longer the come from behind team. We're expected to be on top so those expectations do come from other teams, other programs and our own people too. I mean, just the transition that we've had uh, from my first year um, it's uh, it's really incredible the, the strides that have been uh, been made in this program uh, to really the level that it's at right now, um, where it, just this whole organization, uh, the, uh, the the school, the football, um, uh, I mean, just just everything. I mean, you can't get any better, uh, really, across the whole country. The, the freshmen coming in this year sort of had a, a model to look up to. Said, you know, these guys really want to win. I think what a, what we're saying in a way is that it's a part of the culture of the university. The setting, the activity, the uh, sense of common purpose that, that goes with that, uh, that's been a part of the culture, and it's certainly a part of the culture here. In the last four, years, four or five years that I've been here, I think Virginia's getting itself back to a perennial powerhouse in the NCAA, and uh, I think we we're forced to be reckoned with. Just the individuals that we have here, uh, especially in my tenure, I really focus on trying to win and, and, and really want to do something great as far as uh, championships are concerned. Um, and, and I think that's what we're going to do, win a championship. I'm standing outside the McIntyre School of Commerce, the business school here at the University of Virginia. And at UVA, we have 65 different majors in six different colleges. The business school, education, engineering, architecture, nursing, and the College of Arts and Sciences. We have whatever you could dream of to study. In addition, we have the number one graduation rate for African-American students. The national average is 39%. Well, here at the University of Virginia, it's 86%. We're gonna make sure our student athletes graduate. Um, yeah, my major was sociology, and uh, it's a pretty comforting feeling to know that um, I'm gonna be leaving here with a degree from the University of Virginia, one of the best schools in the country. And um, obviously, I'm gonna try to hang on for fo to football for as long as I can, but um, I'm very comfortable with the fact that if it doesn't work out, then I can know I got a backup plan and a pretty good one with that. I, I knew first and foremost when I got here that I wanted to have my degree. Um, and on top of that, I definitely wanted to uh, pursue a career um, in, in football. Uh, and fortunate, fortunately, uh, both of those are looking as if they're, they're both gonna happen. Um, 
I'm getting my degree and I uh, actually just got back from my mini camp in Jacksonville. When you say you have a degree from, from Virginia, I mean, it, it just immediately demands respect uh, from everybody around. I admire the fact that when I talk to people who employ former athletes here, uh, whether they employ them as professional athletes or as uh, managers or as whatever they might be, uh, the first thing I hear is how competent these people are. I remember listening to a pro coach at a you know, football hall of fame event in New York talk about how easy it was to coach Virginia alumni, that they came in with an intellectual grasp of, of what the game was all about. On the other side, I can remember a former athlete who was actually a basketball star and became fairly prominent one of the large invest, investment banking companies and talking once to a member of his board as he was moving up through the, the system. And he said that the amazing thing was that he could see the educational value of the discipline, the learning of team activities and so on, in addition to an extraordinary education that this man brought. I set a goal for myself to graduate in uh, three and a half years and I did it um, so I could focus uh, just on athletics uh, when I was done. Like you said, you can't play football forever, but um, uh, having a degree to fall back on, whether, whatever you may do after you finish playing football, I mean, just having that, and not having to come back to school, you know, um, make things a lot easier. Coming to the University of Virginia was one of the best decisions I've ever made. And, uh, the last five years have been great. And be able to come to one of the top public schools in the country and get an education and have a great football experience is, you know, something to look back on and reflect on. Just the, the way this organization is run, I mean, the academic supporting staff and the way Coach Grow uh, really runs the whole, the whole, uh, the whole ship, it, um, it, it, it just kind of puts you, it, it forces you to have your own, uh, it forces your own um, agenda. Uh, and, and with that being said, um, I mean, academics definitely on the forefront. Something that I obviously knew that I would come here and pursue when I got here, and academics were definitely first on the list. And whenever there was a conflict, I uh, always made sure to keep academics at the forefront of everything because that's really why I was at this school as opposed to another school. UVA is just a wonderful institution academically, and I feel I would feel that I, I, I would shortchange myself by not really getting uh, my education and my degree. Well, I always wanted to graduate, but, you know, the road to graduation was kind of tough, you know. Had a lot of people around me, great support staff, the academic staff stuck with me, and they kept pushing me, and, you know, once, you, once I started going to class after I had that bad semester, my, uh, my fall, my second year, that spring was a great semester for me, and I, I saw how happy I was with the results of the grades I got, so, you know, by, by seeing the results, it just pushed me further to keep going and, and trying to do better, and, and that's what I did, and I was able to graduate in four years. Coming from Florida, people always ask me why I chose the University of Virginia. And I always ask myself why I wouldn't. Uh, you know, the football's great, the education's great, uh, the social life's been wonderful. And I've met some of my lifelong friends, and I appreciate every minute I spent. Since leaving the New York Jets and returning to his alma mater, head coach Al Groh has led UVA to two postseason bowl wins, three consecutive top 25 finishes, and produced the nation's top tight end the Mackey Award winner, Keith Miller. The ACC's Jacobs Blocking Trophy winner in Elton Brown. And the Butkus runner-up finalist, Ahmad Brooks. In addition, we have seven players drafted in this spring's NFL draft, third most in the country. Five more players signed as free agents. The significant thing is, 11 of these 12 players have graduated from the University of Virginia. The only one who did not left the program in just three years. University of Virginia is the best blend of championship football and educating young men. Don't settle for less. Coach Grow emphasizes excellence in all fields, and one of the things that, that I always had to check myself was, am I, am I pursuing excellence in the academic world and also on the field? And whenever I got the opportunity to apply more pressure in academics, I did, and that's in spring and summer. And, when I needed to, to make sure that I had the free time to be excellent on the field, then I made sure that I kept my balls uh, so that I could do that. I got to experience my first graduation this year with kids that I had worked consistently with for the last two years. And, you know, I attended graduation and it was like they were my own children. I mean, as they called their names out, I cried. 
Um, I was so excited to see them succeed. For some of them, you know, they came here, they were excited to play, but never in a million years, if you'd asked them five, ten years ago, did they ever think that they were going to graduate from the University of Virginia, they'd tell you no. And so just the excitement for them, for their parents, the accomplishments that they've made both athletically and academically, it's, it's awesome. And I'm excited for the years to come with all the guys that are going to be graduating. And just the push that we have that not only do they graduate from undergraduate school, but we try and graduate early so that we can start professional schools, graduate schools, and other degrees. So it's not just one degree, but we're committed 100% to, to all of life. The new advances that they've had in their program uh, and just their overall care about really every one of us, uh, every one of us athletes. Um, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's very difficult really not to do well just from the fact that they stay on you. Uh, I mean, every day, um, uh, I mean, they're, they're there for you to, to help in whatever areas that you need help in. Um, and it really just makes, makes things a lot easier. Um, I think that academic affairs offers a lot to our student athletes because it allows them to have a home away from home. Um, we wear many hats. We're not just an academic advisor. Um, a lot of times we kind of fill the role as a parent, as a mentor, as a motivator. We learn a lot about the kids. It's not just about academics. It's not just about athletics. It's about who they are as people, where they come from, what they bring to the table. So there's a real level of trust. Um, and we're able to help them succeed because we've created that relationship with them. And when they succeed on the field, we celebrate with them. When they succeed in the classroom, we celebrate with them. And when they succeed personally, we celebrate with them. And it's really a family environment. And again, we go outside of just working with them academically. Their parents become involved. Their siblings become involved, and for the four or five years that they're here, we try to celebrate every success that they have. So it's it's, it's a great relationship. Yeah, I think the academic support staff is is um, a great help. Um, in our first year, they they play a big role because you have study hall four nights a week, and it really sets an example of how hard you have to work and you have to, you learn what you need to do to, to be to be prepared and to, to do well in class. It's a great support system. Like I said, Dean Most. Um, she helped me, uh, she took over when I was in second year, she took over being my dean. I mean, she helped me out a lot. Uh, before that, it was Dean Gutman. She helped me out a lot. And uh, Christy Bice, you know what I mean? I can't, can't say what she did from me, you know. You staying up with me in study hall to like 11.30 at night, 12 o'clock, uh, things like that. So, uh, I mean, this is a happy day, you know. Well, first of all, you come here as a student and then an athlete. And they'll do anything they can to help you get an education. And that's the number one priority of this university is a graduate. What I think we pride ourselves on uh, working with the football program here is that we work with each student as if they're an individual. Um, nothing fits every person. So we really like to sit down with the guys, get to know what their strengths and weaknesses are, um, how they learn, uh, what they like, so that we can be sure that as we're giving them the supports that are necessary, we give them the ones that will make sure that they're successful. They've grown the staff. I've seen it grow from one or two people to now to a, to a pretty good sized uh, body of staff and they're they're so good to help you with your scheduling and keep you on course and um, they get tutors and help you with the, the, the whole program academically our academic advising program is incredible it helps helps you get the grades <laughs> the most overlooked aspect of any player's success on the field is the player coach relationship under the direction of head coach Al Groh we are committed to our players throughout every step of this process our staff has amassed over 30 years of NFL coaching and playing experience. This experience is invaluable when it comes to how we prepare our players at Virginia and for the next level. The benefits of playing in the UVA offensive and defensive systems are invaluable for any player who wants to compete to someday make an NFL roster. With the 30th choice in the 2005 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Heath Miller, tight end from Virginia. Everything is very simple. You know, guys like both fast-paced offense, uh, same way defense, practice run smooth, on the horn, you moving, things like that. So, I mean, everything we do here at Virginia is basically the same in the NFL. And there's a natural connection there. Al Groh used to coach with Bill Parcells. Now he coaches there at Virginia. 
kind of that natural connection, the fraternity, you learn more about Flake. I think you look at an Alvin Pierman as a guy that should be able to come in and at least be that backup, be a kick returner, be a punt returner, and give them something really. Tofield and Jones have yet to prove they can do, and I think you look at Alvin Pierman, five, nine and a half. It's a dream, um, but it's not. I don't think it's a big surprise as far as this type of thing happening to a young man coming out of this this type of program. I think they do a, a very good job of that. They, they teach the techniques that, that can carry over to the next level. So, I mean, the workouts from the, the weight room and the mental part as far as Coach Grove getting you prepared and all the coaches learning how to watch film and, and just pretty much carry yourself as, as a person on the next level. Practices are constructed that way, so I think the coaches really do a good job of getting you prepared for the next level. You really feel that Alvin, Alvin had so many advantages there in learning uh, not just the X's and O's about football, but the attitudes, uh, the attitudes that, uh, that players must have to be successful in, uh, in the NFL. Uh, Coach Landry said the greatest motivator was preparation. And when you look at it, to me, that's what Al Groh's all about. He was perfect in that scheme for Al Groh. Over 100 tackles in 2003 it was amazing. And now the isolation in the Cowboys draft room as they were able to trade up for Chris Canty. And as you mentioned, he played for Al Groh at Virginia. It's one of the only, one of only two, three, four defensive teams among major colleges in the country. So between that, they've been able to get a pretty good evaluation considering they have obviously good intelligence within the Virginia program. Al Groh able to assess this player's ability to move to the NFL uh, for Bill Parcells. I Bill was, Parcells. You know, impressed with the organization that they had, how he and his staff did a great job of teaching and then I was able to sit in meetings with them and you know go over some of the stuff and you know just the, the plan that they had how organized they were and then also to watch him uh, react or interact with his players uh, you know you, you could tell he's a caring person that he really cares about his players not just what they're doing on the field but you know caring about them as individuals what they're going to type of person they're going to be once they get out of the University of Virginia and that's the kind of coach uh, you know I always felt like uh, that was that was important you know if you're going to be in the coaching profession you want you want to be like a, a father that you you know would love for that uh, player to be uh, able to feel comfortable coming to you if he had any kind of problems personally and I think that's uh, the kind of coach that Al Groh is. I think the whole mentality that Coach Groh establishes here from day one um, um, making you be responsible for yourself on and off the field, making you be a mature adult on and off the field really um, helps you in everyday life, um, helps you with your studies, and it helps you um, when you make the next step in football as well. Uh, using the platform that you're given to impact others and, and make, you know, and impact yourself and impact others using the platform. So for example, being on the football team, we had an opportunity to um, make, make a large impact on this campus. And uh, wherever you find yourself in life, that's what I'm taking away from that, is wherever you find yourself in life, uh, whatever position you're in, use that position as a vehicle for other things and, and be able to impact others using that, that uh, organization that you're in. I, I think of uh, Coach Grove's saying of just being a face to the fan uh, player, and you know I think that has many more implications than just uh, on the field. And I think it really means that you have to commit yourself fully, uh, just allow yourself to to really see what's going to occur and and just you know go right go right into it you know and not not really hold back. Coach Mike gave me a, a thing to put in my locker a, a couple years ago. I think it was well maybe about a year ago. He told me to go confidently in the path of my dreams and act as if it were impossible to fail. And it's stuck in my locker still today. Uh, my ambition is that I want to see the students graduate on time and on track and go on to distinguished careers. I want the coaches to be the students' best teachers, to be the ones who help them to shape themselves into adults, and I want to see championships. Uh, my sense of it is that to talk about anything less than the best is to guarantee failure. And I, one of the reasons that I wanted Al to come as a coach is that in his personality and his career and his experience over the years, I've seen the capacity to build national championships. So the goal in my view is to be the very best. And you do that for your students. You do it for those who come and watch the game. You do it for the players. Uh, 
to do it because in the end there's, there's no life credential quite like the one that says at a certain point in my life I took on the hardest challenge there is and I beat it. I hope you've enjoyed the insights that we've been able to share with you. We believe that the University of Virginia is a unique place, a place that our student athletes will belong to forever, not just play football and take classes. Our goals are to play for championships, provide our players with the assistance they need to be successful students, and to develop their talents to afford them the opportunity to someday play in the National Football League. On behalf of the Virginia Football Cavaliers, I'm Mike Grove. Go Hoops.